Hey friends, Sis here. We're starting out today's episode a little bit differently today. Um, Big Pops and I wanted to just let you all know before you decide to listen to this episode that we talk about some pretty serious things today. Um, We talk a little bit about suicide and about some trauma um, due to some comics that we are reading. Um, If this is something that you are struggling with, um, we'd love to give you a number to call. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 800-273-8255. If you think that listening to this is maybe not the wisest choice for you today, maybe this is one to skip. Um, We think that these are important things to talk about, and that's why we're choosing to continue forward with this podcast episode. Um, But we want to let you all know that we love you very much and that we hope that you and the ones that you love are safe and are well. Um, Happy listening. Um, We're thinking of you. And again, that number is 800-273-8255. Okay. Thanks, friends. Welcome, Internet, to episode 27 of Sis and Big Pops Culture. Woo-hoo! I am Big Pops, Todd Turner, also known as Mosaic Fan Art, and as always, my lovely co-host. Hi, friends. I am Hannah Jo, a.k.a. Sis, and together we are an adult daughter and father duo. We dive into all things geek, nerd, and fandom. Every episode is family-friendly. <laughs> Oh. Co-hostess with the mostest. That's the me, daughter y'all. With the s- no. What? Where are you going? Is, is, yeah, we're family friendly. We're not. <laughs> I don't know what it would be. What else rhymes with daughter? <laughs> anyway, but like, go ahead, Hannah. You, what were you going to say? You make a fart joke. Um. No. Okay. I was going to tell our friends the spiel. Give it the we got spiel. going on. It's been a minute, Dad. I've missed doing this with you. It's been a minute. I we know. haven't recorded a podcast Mother's, because Mother's, Mother's Day. Day and then, and then Miriam, engagement. my sweet, sweet sis, got engaged. Ayo, girl. So, yeah. So, we haven't done this in a second. And next week, I'm moving. So, so we're going to do a prime time. Tuesday night prime time. Tuesday night prime time, y'all. Yes. I don't know. Either what be there or be square. The June the 1st. 2nd. 1st. June the 1st. Second, First? whatever, First. whatever Tuesday that is. LOL, we're, we're losing doing. it. So right. as per the usual, we got some nerd news we're going to go through. We're going to talk about what we're binging. We're going to talk about dad's pull list. For those, our sweet friends out there who are catching on for the very first time, we'll tell you what a pull list is. Don't worry about Woo-hoo. that, pal. We're going to talk about a phenomenal film. On a phenomenal film on Netflix called The Mitchells versus the Machines. And we're going to talk phenomenal. about you perhaps. Use the word phenomenal. Like phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Okay, gotcha. Go Don't ahead. Don't make fun of my word usage, Dad. I No, go ahead. Yeah. And it's not Schindler's List, but. It was it a phenomenal, phenomenal kids' film, y'all. There you go. Gotcha. Go ahead. Dad. Family friend, family friend, family film. Anyway, go ahead. Mitchell and- versus Machines. We're going to talk about a trade that perhaps was very spooky, and I'm not going to read any more of it. Dad's making the biggest oh no face. Um, Here's the deal. Um, We'll talk about it when we get there, but the Netflix show is much tamer than the comic book I've been 110%. We'll talk about that later. Okay, All right, so. Nerd news. I am. Yeah. So, I have pieces. You do? Go I have ahead. pieces of what the news. Got. Okay. I don't... Um, what have you... What's going on? What's... Jungle Cruise is coming to Disney Plus and to theater. The Rock. Okay. It's coming Good. to Disney like, Plus and to theaters. It's July 30th. Is it going to be it that is, premiere access It's premiere access. You got to pay 20 uh, bucks to watch it. Here's the thing. I want to see that in the theater. Or do you know what? how much fun it would be to watch Jungle Cruise <gasps> at the drive-in? BTW yeah. um, drove by the Regal Cinema in Lexington. Is it open? And today they have like Raya and the Dragon poster up. So there are people, I don't know if they're open yet, but if they're not open yet, they are 
getting ready. I drove past uh, that. We have two Regals in Bowling Green. I drove past the one of them by the mall, which is not my favorite. If I'm going to go to a Regal in Bowling Green, I do. I don't go to that one. Do you go to the one over across the railroad tracks? Yeah, the one where we go. Gotcha. Where we've been. That's my favorite one in Bowling Green. Gotcha. Um, right, just because so I think. Open? And there were cars in the parking lot, and See, they were like what, parked close to. Exactly. Like, there's that's usually no saw. cars in the parking lot. Exactly. And so that's I'm I'm feeling good about Cinema Week, Dad. So we literally just, just today we drove by it and I was looking because we were like, there are cars parked there. Are they open? And I'm like, oh, well, let me so. look at the movie. Po- they had a so, Raya please. and the Dragon movie poster up. So I want to watch that, man. I want to watch it. I got you. So Oops. their Jungle Cruise is coming out. It's July. No, Ju- yeah, July 30th. And it's going to be theaters and Disney Plus premiere access. Okay. Since you talked about that, I'm going to mention this, although it wasn't on my list. Okay. What? So, you know, I'm psyched for the movie Dune, which is yeah. supposed to be HBO Max, right? Yeah. HBO, is it not? They said, psych. You're gonna, kidding. No. They said it's going to be exclusive to the theater for 45 days before we put it on HBO Max. Okay. That makes now, sense. But it's still but, coming to HBO Max. Yeah. But all these people... Now you say have like about HBO. Yes, this has been like I love it. I got HBO, and now it's like, well, you know, you fooled me. You did basically. Like a, like I got a to feeling see wronged. A, a mediocre King Kong Godzilla movie the day it opened. A Mortal Kombat movie, which was like, man, it's all right. I enjoyed and it. The seventeen-hour-long Snyder cut, which was like, man, it's all right. And then the the big awesome. But okay, here's the deal, though. I was going to go watch Dune in theater anyway. Yeah. Here's, I think because I want to watch it that. It has to be, it has to be seen on the big theater. Yeah, I, absolutely. I feel like I want to, cause I feel like watching you watch yes. it will be an experience of itself because you yeah. high key love Dune. Yeah, I do. I like Dune. Mm-hmm. I sure do. And Dune, um, the old school one movie is available on HBO Max, mm-hmm. but there is a mini series available on YouTube mm-hmm. that is, which more, is better. Um, it's well. It's it's more aligned with the book. Okay. So when does it come out, Dad? July, June? I have no idea. Yeah, it'll be August, September, now. October, November, December. Who knows? Um. So DC is like the animation studios are like in full swing. They've got a new DC uh, Batman animated series coming out, being mm-hmm. directed by J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves. Um, cool. Well, but that means J.J. Abrams, like, does he ever finish anything? He usually starts something, and then it's like, somebody else has to come in and finish. But So I'm wondering. But um, there is pictures of it online. It looks pretty cool. And Mm -hmm. also, there was a uh, comic, uh, not a comic, there was a video game which became a comic, which became another video game called Injustice. Okay, yeah. Which is where Superman basically, we get the Superman that you see at the end of the Snyder Cut. The one who's been something happened by Doomsday. Or not Lois Doomsday, gone, wrong or whatever. Wrong. So uh the boom the boom guy. The boom yeah. tube guy. What Dark happened side. in the what happened, I believe, in the video game is that the uh, the Joker kills Lois Lane. Oh. And then Batman won't kill Joker and then Superman, Superman says, goes crazy. It's a fighting game where you can be all these different characters, and then eventually you have to fight Superman. So they're making an Injustice movie, animated cool. movie. Dope. So yeah, I know. Okay. You got um, else? Dave Batista has officially signed to be part of Knives Out 2. I saw that, and so is Kate Hudson. I didn't know Kate Hudson. Yeah. What, are, what kind of shenanigans are they going to get up to, I man? Know. I'm ready for it. I love the first one. I can't wait for the second one. It's going to be fun. Although... The first one had a little bit of anxiety for me because the girl, it all had to do with medication errors, and I'm a pharmacist, and it's sort of... Well, here's the thing. She didn't make a medication error. I know. I know she didn't, but still, because I didn't she know felt that the, until... she the, felt the, okay. the... Spoiler alert. If you've not oh. seen the first one, I doubt... <laughs> if you haven't seen this, it's it been away. literally forever. Hey, so back to nostalgia. Yeah. Stand By Me is coming Stand. out in theaters for the 35th anniversary. Oh. Yeah. And... Also nostalgia. Um, Funko Games has a Goonies tabletop game coming out this summer. Goonies! Goonies, Goonies, Goonies. So you play as, like, one person is the um, the Goondocks master who basically is the bad person, and then everybody mm-hmm. else plays as, you know, do we Slaw know who's who? Or, 
I, I'm sure that you do. Yeah. I think it's sort of like a dungeon master with everybody else playing. Gotcha. But, so I thought this would be so awesome. I can't wait to get it. Bad news. All the pre-sale orders are, it's already, uh-huh. already sold out. Pre-orders are already sold out and it doesn't even come out till June 21st. But somebody speaking, speaking of games, what? Um, there's this college humor TV show on YouTube I that I really humor. like. It's yeah, called Um it. Actually, and it's a game show. And this it's is for probably nerds. for adults. No, okay, because a lot it's, of college humor stuff. A lot is of college, yeah. I mean, this I I wouldn't play this game with kids because it's a trivia game. Gotcha. So I would only play it with like high schoolers and up. But um, actually is like a nerd trivia show where they have like famous nerds come on to the show. And it's like um, Jeopardy kind of, but you have gotcha. to like correct a statement. So they give you okay. a statement about a specific category. So fantasy, cartoons, comics, sci-fi, games, uh, real life skills. And they... Um, they give a statement and there's something in the statement that's wrong and you have to correct the person. So you go, um, that's actually, good. and then answer it. So listen, today in church, they were talking about Samson being the first Avenger. Well, they showed pictures oh, no. of like, like, do you know who this is? You know, Captain America. And you, you knew everyone. Ant-Man. Do you know who this is? And, uh, and then Captain America, Thor, Hulk, whatever. Did you, so um, actually were- in church? These were the Avengers, blah, blah, blah. And they've, you know, they've been the Avengers from the very beginning. And uh, our friends of ours, Rex and Stacy, are with us. I turned around and go, actually, Captain America didn't join the Avengers until issue four. Um, actually. And, um, actually, <laughs> Captain America was not. One of, even though in the movie they call him <laughs> the first Avenger, right? So, anyway. Well, so that is, it's not released yet. It's coming out on Kickstarter. And so you, they're releasing like a trivia game based off of gotcha. the TV show. That's cool. That's fine. I think, yeah, I yeah. think that's really cool. Um, did you know AT and T is selling Warner Brothers? To whom? Discovery Disney Plus. Oh, Discovery. why? Well, they're still going to hold the majority of it. Why? Because AT and T doesn't know how to run a entertainment business. <laughs> All they know how to do is do telephones. Why Discovery Plus? I don't know. I don't have. I that. guess because Discovery's wanting more platform. Well, I think what we'll do is the HBO thing will stay. But who knows? This hasn't, you know, but I just saw that. And Amazon's trying to buy MGM for like $9 billion. Oh so goodness. I know. Well, but I saw now that all of these Amazon things Prime. have like premium subscriptions now. So it's like Amazon Prime Premium. What? How does that even happen? I have no idea. What does that even mean? I have no idea because I was Googling how to watch Braveheart. And it said you can watch it on Amazon Prime Premium. Or what? Hulu Premium. And I'm like, what is that? All right. Anyway. Maybe I'm lying to you. I don't know. That's Somebody all I got. Somebody fact check that. Fact check. Fact check. Fact checker. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what could be the name of, I almost said uh, Randolfo it would be our fact checker. Uh, um, but I don't know. Anyway, we'll have Ran- a fact checker. Randy. Randy. Nebulous anyway. fact checker that doesn't exist. Um, I had one more piece of news about, um, and I don't know much about this. I haven't seen the trailer. Didn't watch the first one, so maybe this isn't a piece Go. of news. What is it? But the new um, Venom Let There Be Carnage. I almost brought up a Carnage. I literally almost brought up a Carnage mosaic to have behind September 24th. Me. Do you know who Carnage is? We can play Woody by? Harrelson. Yeah. Which, like, I'm here for. Okay. Because so I like I, him. You know, I couldn't watch... I turned Venom. I didn't. Off. I didn't watch Venom. I didn't watch but it. My, but all my friends are like, "Yeah, Eddie Brock's a, a turd." So just watch it, realizing he's a turd. So Cletus Cassidy, who is Venom, is like a psychotic. He's like he is. He has like active psychosis. He is psychotic. He's a really yeah. Maximum Carnage was the um, um, big uh, comic book run where he like kills people and stuff. So here's the thing: I like Woody Harrelson. I know he's he's good. I think he's a funny you dude. You like I really... him because of Zombie Land, <laughs> and he's really good. And now you see me too. That was a good movie. As well, I was in born Hunger Games. Um, born I killers. know him by a lot of things. Okay, right. well, but I knew him in Cheers. That was like his first big role. He was like this dumb guy who was a bartender, but he was so funny. 
Yeah, I'm I, I'm scrolling through his IMDb and Cheers is popping up. Yeah, Cheers. Oh, that guy in the Good one. Place was in that too. Wasn't he like Natural Born Killers or something like that? Or um, I can't remember. Yeah, Natural Born Killers, Three Bills. Was he in White Men Can't Jump? Yep. Yep, with Wesley Snipes. He's been in a lot of big movies. He was in 2012. Yeah, he was the crazy guy on top of the thing. Yes, going, on the it's it gonna be and yeah. Yellowstone. He was the Yellowstone yes. guy. Was it Yellowstone? Yeah. Yeah, it was Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. I've been to Yellowstone. I haven't. I have. All right. That's cool. All right, that's my, all of our news. Okay, yeah. The Anna, end End of news. Yes, sir. What are you watching? What's okay. binging? Three things. I'm watching Suits still. I got three things. Hey, twins. I know. Suits. Suits. All right. You haven't got to the last uh, season, so you haven't stopped watching it? No, <laughs> you don't watch the last. Still season. on season two. The guy that I can't stand, the big bad that they introduced. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh, I can't stand anyway. him. I can't stand okay, him. He is I like this. It. Like he is like he thinks he's stoic. You know, like, he's like soft. Everything. He has like a soft voice, but I he's know. but he's like this. actually an actual turd. And I just I get so Can we say mad. Turd on a family friendly get, podcast. That's not nice. A nug. He's an actual nug, and I'm so, <laughs> so mad about him. Every time he walks gotcha. on the screen, I'm like, ooh, I can't stand that guy. And I, like, say it out loud. I'm like, ooh, that guy's the worst. Mm. And this is, of course, for adults. It's for adults. It's for grownups. They, okay. they, curse, they curse, and they deal with adult themes and don't watch this if you're a kid. Understood. A kid show I'm watching, Gravity Falls. What is that? Gravity Falls is on Disney Plus. It's a Disney show. It was like on Disney XD or is something. Is it real people or is it animal? It's a cartoon. Gotcha. It's a cartoon. And they have... It's What's it about? Digger and Mabel and a Grunkle Stan. It's <laughs> no, like an uncle. uncle. Stan, they call him Grunkle. Call him Grunkle grumpy. Stan because he's just... He's a crotchety old dude. Like Rumpelstiltskin. Grunkle, Grunkle Stan. Stan. So what's the premise of the show? So that's... It's um, these kids that are living in this weird town where, like, weird things happen. Where, like, in the very first episode, gnomes dressed up as a teenage boy and tried to make Mabel their queen. That's fun. It's it's just, it's just like, like, yeah. Silliness. It's silliness and shenanigans and, like, some, like, like, wax figures came came to life and are like, Mm -hmm. Grunkle Stan, we hate him. And, like, stuff like that. Like, weird shenanigans. (laughs) And so it's it's fun fun to, like, watch that. It's fun to, like, play in the background while I'm painting or things like that. I got you. Um, And I'm still watching Ruby. Okay, got you. Um, Last time I need to correct myself because last time you said the colors, but it's not blue, it's black. So it's red, oh. white, black, and yellow. Black and yellow. Red, white, black, and yellow. Red, white, black, and yellow. And, black and oh yellow. man, it's on, it's on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. They're all on not Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime Premiere. I don't, don't even know, know if that, that exists. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that exists. We don't even know if that's real life. Um, yeah. So I'm watching that. We are not uh, investigative journalists. No, I'd be bad at it, man. Yeah. I'm too... I'd I would, like, yeah, I would just, you were that! Not really, sorry. But I, I would at least... Oh, I don't know. My um, bad. So I am really liking it. You know, my there, beard is on point today. Yeah, Dad. Look sorry. At, look at it, I know. <laughs> I know this is an I, auditory medium, but I really feel good about it. Okay, Dad, I, I'm here for you. If you're I'm looking at you it on YouTube your, or Facebook... LOL at you. Really, guys, compliment my beard. Um, so I don't know. I'm really enjoying, I'm really enjoying it. Good. I really like, they're like, they're like introducing new stuff and Mm -hmm. I'm like, we got, we got some like flashback sequences. And this is an American anime, correct? This is an American anime. So it's in English. Anime, 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 You made up a word. And then, 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 and so they got new characters. So they're they got new characters. They're doing some flashback stuff. The lore is getting a bit more hashed out, and some gotcha. shenanigans are ensuing, my man. Like, so this is uh, teen. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Gravity Falls be for kids. Kids, yeah. And and Ruby. If you're weird about your kids, like and watching anime. like weird stuff, then don't let them watch it. Like, don't let them watch it. Gotcha. Because it's it's but not like I wouldn't say it's as a kid. No. 
Oh, well, there you go. But I don't think pretty, you, you're pretty, pretty, you're pretty strict about stuff like that. Yeah, we are. I think yeah. you would have, it's like more paranormal. Like what, was that, the, what was that show? Eve and Adventure oh, Time. Paranormally, gotcha. Yeah, but, but it's not like. just bonkers. That's completely different because yeah. there's like, who knows where that place was going. Dad, news. What? Is that? what? Adventure Time news. Go ahead. They're doing the thing, the thing that you sent me a picture of. What thing? The Adventure I told Time. You that they were. Yeah, I told you that it was going to be. Oh, on HBO. we talked about that. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we talked about it on the podcast. I can't remember yeah. if we talked about that on the podcast or if you just sent it to me. So I am not necessarily binging because I'm doing like you're doing. I'm just like dabbling. Would that be a good thing? I like. I like because they're all different vibes. So if I want okay, a serious so, drama vibe, I watch that. If I want right. to turn my mind off, I watch Gravity Falls. Well, we are completely done with the Chosen. So you're so, caught up, or they're done done. Completely, no, they're caught up. Um, the thing about so we've finished che- season one. Now, Chosen is a family um, friendly. Um, kids wouldn't like it, but it's a artistic. It's it's done by the same guy. It's the guy whose dad wrote the Left Behind series is the one who's writing and directing this or whatever. And um, it's like the story of Jesus. Um, but a lot of creative liberties. Just I'm telling you right now, not everything in it is biblical, but it's it could have you know, and, and it gives it a. I, I like it. Um, but it's fun to think know, about. It is fun to think about. It's, it's very good, yeah, to think about. So you could watch the first full season on YouTube mm. and the first three episodes of season two on YouTube. And then you and have to buy the, something? You don't have to buy anything. It's available on their app. You, so you can download the chosen app, which is what I, I just downloaded the app and then mirrored it to the TV from my phone. Gotcha. Um, or you could, or you could. I think it's like the chosen dot something TV something. You could pull it up on your computer, so it doesn't cost anything. No. Okay. Um, of course. Okay. They I was going to be like, oh, really? Mm. They paywall? No, no. But here's the deal: where are they making their money? I mean, because this is ads, like a serious donations. Production. There is no ads. There no ads. ads. No, they do like sell like t-shirts and stuff like that. And um, I wonder if it's donations. You, then the, it could be. There, there. The guy talks a lot. I just fast forward through him, but the show like the, is really the director. Good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, it's too much for me. It's too much for me. I, Dad, I love the honesty. Uh huh. So I uh, it would listen <laughs> uh-huh. as a non Christian watching that show that would turn me off. You'd so be like, you, I, I'm out. Sayonara, like, peace and love, Sinara. my guy. So if you are a non Christian but you still would like to watch it, don't watch him. Fast forward it to the show and just watch the show because the show's great. Really, it is. And just for, you know, anyway. Okay, so um, that's one. What else are you watching? Okay, one. so so far I, we both have like mm-hmm. a drama, like a live action drama. Okay, so this is more, this is a, uh, on IMDb TV. So okay. this is on IMDb TV. It's called Doomed, the untold story of Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. So there is a documentary about that horrible Fantastic Four movie they made. No, Which not one? the two that just came out, but the one that was made way back when. You that know what I'm talking about? All of about? them have been not good. I know. that's. Terrible. I've never watched I, a Fantastic I Four movie to, and um, like, oh my goodness, this bopped. I listened to a podcast called Two-Headed Nerd and it is, it is, it has, they cuss in it. So if, don't, don't go watch it if cussing is, you know, not your Listen thing. to it. Don't listen to it if cussing is not your thing. Anyway. I was making a podcast so, joke because it's an auditory gotcha. medium. I don't know, whatever. So they their big question of the week was what has uh, what what has um, comics? What have they taken from comics and then put it in the movies or TV and made it worse and vice versa? And my answer was anything to do with the Fantastic Four was mm-hmm. made worse, especially yep. that giant debacle with Galactus in the second. But anyway, no, this is Roger Corman's movie, which came, which was done, I don't know, in the 90s or late 80s or whatever. I don't know about it, Dad. Oh, yes. Never been on, uh, I've got to get a copy. So anybody out there has a copy, wants to give me a copy of that movie, I, I will want take it. Copy. Anyway, so I'm watching that. The problem was I was having trouble getting it to work on my Prime Video app on the Fire Stick, so I could only watch it on my phone and got tired and flipped over to Hulu because they started... Modoc. Did they? Yes, which is it's stop action animation. That okay. is M for mature. Okay. It's for mature adults. It's like robot chicken um animation type yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, Seth Green is literally like the executive producer. So Patton Oswald is the the voice of Modoc. Modoc stands for we like, mental we, 
mental organism designed only for killing. Okay. So listen, it starts out and they're like, they're like, uh, aim, which is, uh, an old in comic books, everybody knows who AIM is. AIM that, is like yeah, Hydra. if you've if you've seen any Looney Tune, uh, AIM is in right. No, no Looney Tunes would be Warner Brothers, which owns was DC. Well, what's AIM, what's the thing AIM, in? You're thinking Acme. You're thinking oh. Acme. AIM is Advanced <laughs> Ideas and Mechanics or something. Sorry, sorry, Dad. AIM is like Hydra. They're okay. like a hydro group. And uh, Modoc is the leader of AIM. So they're okay. fighting They're fighting over top New York. And all of a sudden, Iron Man shows up. And Iron Man is fighting Modoc at the beginning of this scene. And then Iron Man starts talking to himself. And it's like he's saying something about the people in Greatest, greatest British Bake Off. Greatest British, the Great British Baking the British Show. British Bake Off. Baking Show. Yeah. So he's like... He's like, no, what's his face? That's not correct. And Modoc goes, are you live streaming the greatest breaking show, whatever, while you're fighting me? And he goes, yeah, I can do two things at once. And then he like kicks Modoc and kicks him out of the thing. And Modoc yells, this person wins at the end of the episode. Oh, no. He spoils it for, for Tony Stark. I was hilarious. Oh, that's the worst, though, man. Yeah. Because you get, like, so invest. Oh, I love the Great British Baking Show. Yes. He spoils the end of the oh, greatest that, British. What a villain. What a that villain is, to yeah. do that. But when Tony Stark kicks him, uh, Modoc takes his boot. I know who lost. Yes. This he is goes, the winner. He says, he does. He yells the winner of the uh, of the season of the se- of the series. That was so. That funny. is hysterical. I'm not finished with it, but it is it is my kind of adult. I love that uh, for you. I'm glad for you to enjoy high it. School boy humor. That oh yeah, man. Your parents would go. You shouldn't watch that. Oh yeah, that's funny. Anyway, that's what I'm watching. It's fun. Okay. It's hilarious. It's Patton Oswalt's the voice. So. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I'm also watching Shadow and Bone. Oh, okay. On I'm Netflix, not that it looks like a it you wouldn't like a CW it. CW show. Oh, here it's it's very much. This is see here for this. My little my my teenage girl heart is like yes. I don't know. It's well, it's like the fantasy books that I was reading in high school. Gotcha. It literally is a fantasy mm-hmm. book that I read in high school. That oh, is okay. now. I thought it was a comic book, but it's a oh, it's it's, it's a YA teen, fiction. Gotcha. Which, Which is everywhere. Here for because all the YA fiction people are now your age. Yeah. And we're we're like, okay, yeah, bring it on. And it's really diverse cast, and all of the people in it are like not bad at acting. Like they're actually kind of good. And it's okay. pretty much spot on to the book. And I'm okay. yeah, here for it. Haven't finished it. I have I guess how many episodes I have left? Two. <laughs> yeah. I've been watching it off and on for a couple of weeks, and I just don't want it to end. <laughs> so I have two episodes gotcha. left. Why am I like this? I don't know. Me either, man. Okay. What's your okay pull list? Explain what is list. okay? Yeah, I'd love to do that. Okay. I'd, Explain a pull list, Hannah, because you now have a pull I list. have a pull list. It is one thing at my local comic book store. Who am I? Yeah. Woo! Okay. You are on the list. Sis. Uh, sis is on the list. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Like that. <laughs> Go ahead. A pull list. <laughs> so a pull list is like at your local comic book store. Um, a list that the proprietor has for all of the people that are regulars in their shop about what they are collecting at that moment in time. That way the proprietor can order the right amount of comic books and can save them for you before putting out their inventory for the rest of the public. So it's like a special list that the proprietor of the store pulls from their inventory before putting inventory out. That way you can make sure to get the comics that you're collecting. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So I my list is exhaustive. And Hannah's? One. Is one. Go ahead, Hannah. What do you got? Okay, so dad showed me this a couple weekends ago when we were in Indiana for Nathan's play and yes. Mother's Day. Yep. And um, Ruby is doing a, the anime that I've been watching, is doing a crossover with Justice League. And... I wanted to get it. So my boyfriend and I are watching Ruby. It's one of his favorite things in the entire world. And so I got it so that we could read it. 
Here it is. I know it's an auditory medium, but everyone on Facebook, look at how beautiful it is. It's beautiful. I'm stoked about it. Um, I, I, I don't know enough yet to, to read it. He flipped through it and is like, you can't read this. You haven't read it yet. I haven't read it yet because I'm not caught up. Like, I have to gotcha. watch through season three to be able to understand what's happening gotcha. in the comic book. Which so is so I, funny. I haven't read it yet. I've looked, at, I've looked at it. It's pretty. I am usually a kind of person that doesn't like to get these. What do you, I don't know what you would crossovers? call Crossovers? Like, or like. No, I like crossovers, but like different. Different like um, like Transformers and Terminator and Ruby and Justice League when like DC is doing Fortnite and Batman. Batman, right? Which apparently was a mistake I made because they're saying that the book is fantastically done. Really? Yes. Bummer. I'm sorry. I know, and now I don't got it. So that's all right. Yeah. I got so. Enough. I, I and I, I went and I, I I walked up to my comic book store, my local comic book store, do 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 do, and said, "Hello, I would like to get this. It came out a couple of weeks ago. Do you have it still?" And the guy was like, "Well, let me walk back and show you where it would be." And he's like, "Here it is. Would you like it?" And I said, "Yes, I would. I would please very much enjoy buying it." And so he gave it to me, and I purchased <laughs> and he said, it. Would you like to get it every? Month? And then he said, do, "He's like, would are is this something that you're going to keep wanting?" And I said. Yes, please. Will you please order me the next one? I will make sure to come get it. And he said, I will have it for you. Yeah, because I guarantee you he wouldn't have bought it. If, you, if Oh, no, there's it. no way he would have bought it. And they, like, yeah. For these types of mm-hmm. things, people will buy the first one, and then right. that's pretty much it. But yes, so he's going to get it for me, and awesome. I'm going to go back and get it. Oh, cool. Yay! Awesome. So, I, I'm excited yeah. to read them eventually. That's good. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> You'll have to do your review. <laughs> We haven't done this in so long, and I there are so many cool comics that have come out. Like, I saw your picture. Here's the thing, Dad. I was looking at your picture you posted on Instagram, and I knew so many of the titles because we have talked about them. Yeah, so I'm just going to run through some of them quickly and then okay. highlight some. Okay, love that. Um, so I didn't really narrow it down. I walk with, <laughs> <laughs> no. so I walk with monsters. Yes, which has been a fave for a while. It is, it is a horror comic by vault comics it ended with issue six um this was the young girl who was going after a child abuser who was running for political office and she couldn't do it and she couldn't do it her brother though turns into like this creature that would devour evil people oh no so you come to find out that if he like scratches you or draws blood or whatever you can become whatever monster you are inside so he turns himself into this dog type thing goes in they they think he's one of the dogs out looking for the girl he scratches the bad guy needless to say what does he turn into guy, bad guy gets his so what's anyway. he turn into what is the bad guy know, what monster oh no, dad no, are we gonna read this is this gonna come out as a trade and we're gonna read it i'm sure it will come out as a trade <sighs> uh we could read it there's so many good ones that we could read i'm stoked um, we're gonna i'm stoked to read wind i'm stoked there's so many good ones seven on your secrets I'm stoked. Seven Secrets, Wind. Uh, homesick Pilots. Oh, All man. these are out in, coming out in trades. So I'm stoked about it. We only find them it. when they're dead. I want to watch, do that one, too. I'm stoked about um, it. So, um, Yay. <laughs> Nightwing issue 80 just came out. It continues to be a fantastic book. Probably one of the best books coming out from DC currently. Uh, the relationship he has with Barbara Gordon is so good. You've mentioned that a um, couple times. He's trying to find this character that is stealing people's hearts. And um, pause like their actual physical heart, or yes. like, oh yes. no, yes, or like they metaphorical. Call him, they're heart. calling this character the heartless. Ooh. Yes, it's I wondered so if funny. it was like a Regina in Once Upon a Time, and she would like take people's hearts, like, m- like, but not their actual heart, oh, no, but like no, their no. heart, actual, actual heart. Okay. So that's gross. The thing about it is, is that, you know, we said Dick Grayson got a lot of money when Alfred Mm. died and he wanted to help all these people. So he report, he gets his wallet stolen, right? We talked about that. But before that, he had set up this, this guy and his son to, into this hotel to stay the night. Mm. So what happens is the police come to, to his house and are like, so, you know, this guy, uh, oh yeah, I know. I reported my wallet stolen. He did not steal it. Um, it was stolen afterwards. He goes, well, that guy never made it. And he's dead without a heart, and you're the last person that saw him, so you're like uh, 
a suspect. suspect. So then he's like, he calls Barbara Gordon and says, Hey, uh, you're my alibi. Can you come back? And of course they both have law degrees. So they're in there and listening to Barbara Gordon, take these poor police officers to town apart, apart is so worth it. Oh no. He uses, he, he gets the, um, one of the Robins to come and go. One of the Robins. Yeah. To go visit where all these homeless boys hang out to try to get information so that they can find out what's happening. And of course he uses his dog that he just saved. And he goes, why take the dog? Because people talk to people with dogs a whole lot more than without dogs. That's a, that's a fact. That's so, a fact. And the dog is a girl. I found that out. So and the girl dog. So, Yay. So, so that's, that's a great cute. Book. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like dogs. I like animals. So, uh, Marvel's doing a thing called Heroes Reborn. You'd mentioned is, that, which is like how they age? No, no, no. What's okay. happened is something's happened to the world and um, all world the man. Avengers n- never became the Avengers. The only person who re- remembers is Blade the Vampire Hunter, who is currently on the what? Avengers team. Yeah, he's the only one that knows. So like... Uh, Captain I don't even America, know who that is, Dad. Oh, he's a... He's a huge character. Blade the Vampire Hunter. We're going to have to watch one of the movies. I'm not. I mean, I like vampire stuff. Okay. I'm down. But in, he's part vamp. He's part vampire. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So many people love Blade the Vampire Hunter. But anyway, um, cool. the thing about it is, is that at the this they're on issue two and they're doing some minor things in between. Um, the people who are the superheroes are called the Squadron Supreme, which basically were created by Marvel for the Avengers as... It DC sounds like bad. It they sounds... were DC knockoffs. Hyperion, you know who Hyperion is? I do. Yeah, so he's the Superman character. So he's like the head good guy. But he was like bad so, in Exiles. Uh-huh. So yeah, so he was we don't like, know what's going he on? He was like, ugh. Like, so the first blah. issue was great. The two fill-ins were great. The second issue just came out, and I wasn't that great for it. But here's what happened. So <laughs> here's what it wasn't that great. This. But here's what happened. So. What happens is <laughs> when the first issue came out, a lot of the comic book shops got these collectible trading cards. They came with like yeah, 14 cards. That's so fun. That were sealed, which I never opened them. I don't open them. I just keep them, put them away. Now they're worth but a people, gazillion dollars. I don't know. People opened them and it gives away who the villain is. Oh, no. Is it Hyperion? No. Guess who the villain is. Uh, dun, just dun, guess. Dun, dun, who did, who, who, everybody, who everybody thought was the villain in WandaVision. Agatha. It's Mephisto after all. L O L. It it's is Agatha Mephisto. all along. Or maybe it's not Mephisto and they just threw that card in there. But there are all these Avengers and, and Squadron Supreme and Mephisto. So, yeah. I never finished That's WandaVision. It. Still have two episodes left. All right. I got to Again, I why so am I like this? There's a new book that came out by Image called Time Before Time, Ooh. which is um, it's set in the future and. People are transporting rich people or people on the run back to the past to escape their so to they escape can escape the present. What so, little uh-huh. nugs? I almost yeah. said I almost said that word that we're not going to say anymore. And um, the art is really good. The concept is really good. One guy, they're like runners, people who do that type mm-hmm. of stuff, and it makes you sick. So one guy decides I'm going to steal a pod and escape back in time or whatever, and like. It, his plan gets foiled. Mm. Um, it's it's it, this right here book I'm really looking forward to. Here's the thing, Dad. The what? more and more we do this, the mm. more and more I like Boom Studios and Image Yeah, more well, than got, Marvel and DC. Well, I've got three more Image books I want to just touch okay, on. Okay, lay it on. Lay it on us. Um, uh, there's a book called Carmen. Which with is a on K or C. Three, with a K. This is definitely adults. Um, the thing about it is, and it just turns a lot of people up, there's a lot of nudity in it. It is not, it is human form nudity, not sexual know. nudity. Okay. You know what I mean? So like it, people just it, walking around like Electra no, when we read no, that comic? Me, uh, let me tell you. Okay. What happens is Carmen, the character, is a person who ushers someone in from death to the afterlife. Oh, yeah. And so you're not wearing clothes when you're dead. No, you. some people are. But okay. the main character of this story committed suicide in the bathtub. Oh. So she is walking around the first two and a half issues naked. Okay. Um, so, and it's like she doesn't even know that she's dead. So is it, is it like... Um, 
She's sh- go ahead. I'm like thinking what? like Stardust. No, this character. Uh, so Do you know what I, I mean? was. I know what you mean. No, this char- the Carmen character is supposed to usher them into the afterlife. It's I believe uh, what I'm getting from it is that the this these people believe in reincarnation. I think is what they believe. Um, what happens in issue three? Because I was going to give it till three issues, and if it didn't get better, I was dumping it. Which is <clears throat> feel appropriate. I like that and rule. Issue three was really good. Mm, um, what was really good about else, it? What was different? Someone else. Someone else dies. Oh no! And it's really heartbreaking. This person dies, doesn't commit suicide, and the girl finally comes to grip with what she's done. Mm. Sorta, sorta. And it has a really big message about suicide in it from the Carmen character who's supposed to be ushering her, basically saying, you're selfish. You didn't even think about what you did. Mm. You know, this was this is your parents' house. They show her her parents' house. They haven't even gotten the phone call yet that she has passed. And, you know, when's the last time you saw them? Here's your bedroom, just like when you left it and everything. So um, <clears throat> I think it's going to be really, it could be really interesting. Plus, the guy who dies gives her his jacket. So now she doesn't have to walk around naked anymore. That's nice. So, um, but this is definitely for adults, only adults because of the nudity and the adult themes. Hey, I just want to say this because we're talking about it. If you are really sad and need some help, the suicide prevention lifeline is 800-273-8255. And we'll put that in the show notes too. And we'll put a trigger warning on this episode that we're, this is something we're going to talk about. Yeah. I should have said that. It's okay, dad. But we'll say it now. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's, um, it's, it's really good. It became good with this issue. Yeah. I was like, I don't like how it's just walking. It just basically waltzed around the whole entire thing until this issue. Yeah. So who knows what'll happen afterwards. Um, yeah. So, um, Daredevil's fantastic. Continue reading Daredevil. He's (laughs) I uh, yeah, I went to I went to a comic book shop yesterday and saw Electra still on the cover, and I saw Electra still on the cover of yours too. Yes. He's fantastic, dope. And um, she's training some kid, and something happened. The kid does oh, no. something that she shouldn't have done, and oh, no. it gets. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen from now, but um, <clears throat> so four books I really want to hit on. Okay, the the big ones. Lay them on one us. is from last week. It's by Image Comics. It's called The Good Asian. You've talked and, about that before. Yeah, well, not on here. Um, this is set um, around World War II. So, like, this uh, guy is a detective coming. He comes from Hawaii to help investigate a um, investigate some stuff going on hmm. in San Francisco area, I believe it. Ah, uh, maybe I'm not. Oh no, I can't remember where he is. But anyway, it's not. So, it was not good in the San Francisco area for. He's he is held in detention. Even though he's a police officer, yeah. Until until the police officers come and get the him guy's out. like, no, get, he can't be in here. Which was really, it really is good to read this, um, especially with stuff that's going on within our society now. Um, yeah. So this guy um, is a detective. You see how um, people of Asian descent were treated during this time. Um, like, uh, you know, you never know what's going to, these kids, you don't know, they don't know what's going to happen to mm-hmm. them or anything. Um, so the, beyond that, the story's fantastic. The way mm-hmm. he sees things, it reminds me of like, like he's detecting things and like, it'd be a close up on his eye and then a close up on something he sees. And it's like, you see his thought process, sort of like you would see like Robert Downey Jr. and um, Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. Remember how he would. It would go like through. go really, really slow. And then, like, how he would see how and things were going to happen. And he would see, happen. like, I'm going to go this way, and you're going to go this yeah. way. And, and then he would be like, and break, yeah. and it would happen. Yeah. So um, I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, mm. It's a really good book. I, it's a plus for me. Um, they Marvel does this thing called Life Story where they take a group. That's what I thought you were talking about when you were talking about Hero Reborn. No, this is Life Story where they take a comic book character and they start them at the beginning and they age through time normally so they change some of the stories or they adjust some of the stories and um they're doing one now for the fantastic four i wouldn't normally mention it but i love fantastic four fantastic four and is your absolute favorite and you're allowed to love whatever it is you so like so much they change so much of the origin really like yeah, they don't like, go to space 
they do go to space, but like Ben Grimm and Reed Richards are not friends. They haven't been friends. Why? Johnny Storm basically blackmails Reed into allowing him on the spaceship, which makes sense. Because which, yeah, 110%. A, why would you take him? Uh, on, in the first place. And um, there is no Doctor Doom at the, in the first 10 years. So this follows, this is the 60s, so no Doctor Doom. But um, it's interesting because they, he sees a glimpse when they become Fantastic Four of a, of a disaster coming to Earth. And it is Galactus. Oh no! And um, so he's got. He's trying to convince these people that listen, we've got to figure out what this is. And it's so funny because he convinces them to go basically the negative zone. They see Galactus, and instead of wanting to explore, which is what the Fantastic Four always want to do, Reed Richards is like, "We got to no leave. We can't come in here. We got to get out of here." So I'm interested to see where this goes. Yeah, it doesn't seem. Mm-hmm. The same to the people that you, the people, LOL, the it, characters. It's not. It is different. But I think what happened, I love the Fantastic Four because they're a family unit. And mm-hmm. I think what we're going to get to see is them become a family Which unit. Which we love. We love a story where people become closer together as a family. We'll talk about one yeah. later. Gotcha. So, um <laughs> My other one is called Radiant Black, which is issue four, just came out by Image. This is the one we meant, I mentioned it before. The guy comes home, he's a failed uh, writer, comes home and he, he and his buddy are out drinking and he touches a black hole. We talked about this. And he gets the Same. power of a black hole, right? Well, there's a, another character who ha- also has the power of the black hole who's like Radiant Red. But in this issue, you finally start to, the last issue, you begin to believe, find out that this black hole is actually a creature. Oh, no. In like, this car- issue, like, a, like a venom symbiote like type a, of shenanigans? Something like that. Something like that or something of that nature. Um, nope. In this issue, they finally be able to communicate with one another. Ooh. And um, okay. so they're communicating and he's basically saying, there is something bad coming. Get Are ready. prepared to do whatever it takes to do this? Mm. And um, and at the end, the Radiant Black f- fights Radiant Red. Um, they start to, a building starting to come down, and both of them together are trying to save the building. Aww. Something happens to the guy who's Radiant Black, and I don't want to give it away because the story completely just, changes. Okay, well then don't tell us. Like so, completely out of the blue. I was like, oh. It's episode, it's what? episode, LOL, issue three. Issue four. Four. Issue four. So could down people down. find these if they wanted to? They're awful hard to find. Okay. Honestly, they are. You'd have well, to probably that's the buy thing, them man, on a because we're, market. We're talking about all of these really cool comics, but some of them are like two, three, four. These are harder to get because they were hard to find anyway. Gotcha. The, the okay. print run was not extremely high, and the the people who got them were like, this is great, and then word of mouth got out. Yeah. So if you don't have a guy buying it for you, it, you would have to Okay, buy. so if this you is something you're interested in. probably buy them off of eBay. Go um, check out, okay. You probably have to pay a couple extra dollars per issue. Do they the have like a library for comic books? Comixology. You can buy them on Comixology, okay. which is through the Kindle app, and it doesn't cost as much. Okay. Absolutely. So, no, but I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself here, like, it'd be dope if there was like, if you could do this, you could do like a comic library and where people like, you can't like leave the place with oh, the no. comic books, but there, you could the go there to... No. To read Heck them. no. Nobody's coming to my house to read comic no, books. No, it would be it would, it would be a library. It would be everything. a library. You would, it would not be your house. You can I think you can get like trade paperbacks from the library. I know Honestly. that you I know that you can get like uh mm-hmm, yeah. graphic novels and yeah, that's there's what a I mean. fancy word that's not graphic novels. Trade paperbacks, which that's is not trade paperbacks. Oh, I don't know what the fancy word is. I don't remember what they are. Oh well. So Last anyway. One. Book of the week. Book of the week. Book of the week. Give us the book of the week. Wonder Girl issue one. You loved it. It was your favorite. Oh, man. it's. Oh, I want to read it. The art is amazing. So basically, this is the origin story of the character that was introduced during the uh, DC Future State uh, Wonder Woman issues one through two. And this is Marvel. This is DC. DC, yeah. Um, So, yeah. Fantastic book. This is my pick of the week. Radiant Black would have to be an be a, a close second. It would be a second place. Yeah, yeah. Type but, of shenanigan. Um, 
So we're getting introduced to Yara. She's going back to Brazil to cool. get her, um, to I guess, to get it, find her origin. When she gets to Brazil, something happens throughout the world. And all of these characters oh, no. are like, Som- something's not right. Something's different. Something's up. Something's up. And you see like um, Queen Nubia, who's like in charge of one of the uh, Thymascara right now, mm-hmm. is like. Queen Nubia. Yeah. She's, That's cool. She's like, That's an Egyptian. Uh, we need to get. We need to go. And um, then there's someone else uh, in like the the god, the Olympus gods. Hera is like, something ain't right. We need to go. And then some other place where they're meeting are like, we need to go to Brazil. There's Greek so and Roman these, gods, and all these places are gonna are gonna converge, converge on this. It, oh, the no. funny thing, the need the splash page when she steps foot in Brazil shows all these things and one of the pictures up in the corner is Nightwing walking his dog. I was like, that is hilarious, fantastic. Cuz he has so, his and cuz he has uh, his dog. Cuz he has his dog and he's going out now. That's really cute. Oh. So, I love I it like, when stuff like that happens. Yeah, I was like, that because is Because so it's neat. the same world. Yeah. There even you get Superman you get Harley Quinn going, something's not right. Batman's going, huh? Oracle, who is, uh, I'm going to show Hannah the picture on the screen. Oh, that's so cool. And he has his, there's Catwoman, and he's holding his little doggy. Yeah. So he's holding his dog. <laughs> that's so, so cute. Yeah, so this, this book is uh, fantastic. I don't want to so spoil fun. it, but I think it's, I was been looking forward to it. I was like, my friend Hector said, um, when, when this book, uh, the other book, DC Future State book came out, said, listen, if they would do a book for her, I'd buy in a heartbeat. Yeah. And I'm so glad. I Here's forgot that it was coming out. I forgot to tell Scott to put it back for me. And he had he it already, for you? He had it already in my <sighs> stash. Let's talk about how great Scott is. I know. He knows you, him. my guy. That's it for my comics. Dope. So now we, we watched... watched the, the Mitchell cutest little movie man versus machines. Here's the thing. I was like I was excited to watch it and I'm getting ready to move so I'm like do I want I don't like, got time for this. I'm like I'm going to sit down and pay two. Oh. <laughs> you didn't have to pay. It's free. No, it's I didn't have Netflix. to pay. But I, no, you didn't let me finish my sentence. I'm like I had cuz when I watch movies that we talk about dad, I sit down and I like pay attention to them. Gotcha. Like I Make try notes. not to knit while I'm doing them. Like mm-hmm. I try to like be there watching the movie and it was like two hours long and I was like, oh, this is two hours long. And then it gets started and I'm like immediately into it. it and like, so I'm like live texting dad, my reactions the entire yeah. time. I'm like, dad, dad. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, Hannah, it's really good. <laughs> okay. Well, let me give a, just a little bit of a lowdown. Okay, yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, this is a uh, rated PG. Mm-hmm. It is an hour and 53 minutes long. It's long. It is available on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Sony, which is interesting because we Sony had animation. talked about that all Sony is going to go to Disney. Disney, no, no, wrong. No. Go to Netflix after it's been released. And so I Correct. thought it was interesting that this was Sony Animation and we had talked about that before. Direct to Netflix. And um, yeah, that's all. So here is how my... my I, I'm going to say this is the kind of movie. This is what I thought. If this you is, could take... If you could take the vacation movie... The original okay. vacation movie with Chevy Chase. Oh yeah. Combine it with iRobot. Yeah. And make it animated. For kids. That's for kids. This that's is what, what it is, man. It was great. So this follows um <laughs> Kate, who is a high school senior getting ready to go to college. She is like a really good um she makes videos. She does design. Um, she does design video design. design. And video I mean, she, yeah, she does all of it. She does the okay. producing. She does the right. So she's got going design. to some fancy schmancy school for film school in kids college. To do film in college and, in California. Um, the dad is an outdoors guy and uh, gets attacked by possums. Um, he <laughs> and, and knows nothing about uh, technology. Accidentally breaks her computer. Bless his heart. He didn't mean to break her computer. He didn't mean to break her computer. Yeah, and mm-hmm. they didn't have to be fighting over it. So yes, so this is this is like everybody has Siri, but it's called Pal, Pal which is voiced by Olivia Coleman, who was um, she the Crown. Yes, yeah, the Crown, or she was no, no, no. She, she was, was the Queen she, on the Crown. She was the second Queen. Well, I know she was in a movie about the Queen. 
She, in the, the Netflix series The Crown, oh, she was okay. the second Queen Elizabeth. I remember her from Hot Fuzz. She was oh, in Hot Fuzz. She was one of the police too. officers in Hot that Fuzz. That too. So she is the voice of Siri, which is Pal. <laughs> and what happens is, is they're, everybody's got their little smartphones and they're downloading an update and basically it becomes iRobot. But, well, she becomes obsolete because, and the creator is a bit yes. of a turd about her becoming obsolete. And yes. he, excuse me, a bit of a nug about her nug. becoming oh, obsolete. That's, that's hilarious. And we'll put a disclaimer at the front of this too. Suicide warning. And Hannah says the word turd a lot. Yeah. And the creator just kind of throws the phone and is like, eh, this is, we don't need this anymore. We got robots now. Yeah. And, and she's like, she's like, uh, she's like ah. so the funny thing is, is that the dad decides he cancels Kate's flight to school and he's like, we're going to drive across country as a family. One last road trip. Uh, as a full family before she goes to college. Yeah, she's a, she little, has brother a little brother. Who's like who how loves, old? Eight? Nine? I don't know, but he he has a voice about as deep as mine. I thought that was hilarious. He loves dinosaurs, calls people up on the phone randomly and says, Do you want to talk about dinosaurs? It's and so but like funny. very kindly, would you would you like to have a conversation with me about dinosaurs? And they're like, okay, no. Thank and he you. marks the name marks off. Marks the name off. And keeps off goes he was like one. in the K's in this phone. I know. Book. Like he'd mom, been doing that for a minute. The mom the, vi- the like, violet one. The the mom is trying to like be the best uh, social media mom there is. Like she's and doing, she's like, so bad at fails. it. She's trying to make cupcakes with the kids' face while watching them. Like you know, like people would do on Instagram. And their their next door neighbors are like uh, social influencers. Well, the the voices, the, their voice. The, yes, it's Chris John Teigen. Lennon and Chrissy Teigen. John Legend. John Legend. John LOL. LOL. John Lennon, Come at me. Real. If it's John Legend, I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. We knew we knew what you meant. Okay. So the, the um the Mitchells also have a dog, a pug named <laughs> Monchi. Guess who who's voiced by a human? No way. Who? Doug the pug from Instagram. You're lying to me. No, they use his barks and his voice. That is the cutest. Is that not hilarious? Yes. I didn't even, Miriam was the one who introduced me to Doug the pug. She, Miriam loves Doug the pug or she did. uh, Yeah. So they are on a last ditch effort to get her to school when the robo apocalypse happens. When the robo apocalypse happens and they somehow manage to keep themselves safe. They have these two robots that they have like accidentally reprogrammed because Who are something voiced by Fred Armisen from Saturday Night Live and I believe Conan O'Brien. <laughs> the, I mean, what are their names? Eric and like the yeah, other and like the other robot know. and they're like, we're gonna walk downstairs. Yeah they, they like, like they like do the like they, their face. and he's like look I made sad I liquid out of my face and like draws a teardrop on his face. And I'm like, are you guys okay, man? Like they're really funny. Okay. I want to touch on the animation style. I love the animation style. It, there's like multiple animation styles in it, but I love it. I also love ha- her videos. Her videos are her really videos? funny. Really good. Um, I would definitely follow her on whatever social media she was on. Katie. YouTube. YouTube. And he like can't spell YouTube. <laughs> the, dad. the dad. Yeah. <laughs> so the dad, I, I mean, yeah. Is it it's like a dysfunctional family, but is it really? Is any family fully functional? I don't We're know. All a little bit dysfunctional. Where everybody's a little bit the, them they like watch this perfect family like evade the robots and then yes. they're like they're like we're gonna do exactly what they did and they try to like jump over a thing and they all like the dad's flop like, on top of it. <laughs> and they're like so oh, good. it was so good i know even like uh but the little the 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 little boy girl? raptor Oh, no, the little no. girl who also loves dinosaurs. Who's yes, like the next door neighbor's like, hey, I like, like and he's like, he's like, ah, and the little kid's he, like, ah, he like, didn't know what to do. The did he? other way, he's like, girl, girl can't compute, and like runs the other. So John Y'all. Legend and Chrissy Teigen's family are like, they like, they're like ninjas and dressed in white, trying to avoid. And they're the robots. like uh, ethereal, like jumping <laughs> yes. over things and like butterfly yeah. kicks, and and the other family's like me. <laughs> yeah, they're like Fine. us. They're like. <laughs> <laughs> flop yeah <laughs> this is a this is a very fun movie 
Very good movie. I love it. Um, your mom and I watched it. I laughed out loud. I laughed out loud during, like, literally like, was, like, cackling. I mean, I just, I have been this entire time talking about it just because it was yeah. so funny. I have I pulled up our like, text conversation just to show, yeah. um, behold, the twilight of man. Like, yeah. the Furbies are talking. <laughs> The Furbies are like a gargantuan There's like Furby. This giant Furby. They go to a mall and Pal can I take remember. over all of electronics. And the Furbies are like talking in like little their little Furby language and there's like subtitles. And this one of yes. the Furbies says, Behold, the twilight of man. And I remember women fighting each other over Furbies at Christmas time. <laughs> it was bad. So it's oh, funny the because the, the okay, yeah, it's a number three Robertson head non-slip screwdriver. So that is what the, each member of the Robertson family or the Rob the Mitchell family has in their pocket at all times. Yeah, and she the the wife was like, "Oh yeah, my anniver- my thirtieth wedding anniversary gift," and the girls and like, "Yeah, in handy. my sweet you know, sixteen present." And you knew, and if without it, the world would be would be a disaster. It'd be doomed. It'd be doomed. Yeah. The the uh, dog, pig, dog, pig, loaf of bread, loaf of bread. <laughs> so that's funny. The robots can't distinguish their pug dog what it is. Like it, the facial recognition and everything, it can tell what everything else is except for their pug, and that's like what throws them over the end, over the edge. My so, favorite is like the like more elite robots and then the, the mom is like her she's like very coddling to the younger one like it's mm-hmm. like a baby like she's like my baby boy like it's very like a little bit coddling towards him yeah and he gets taken away by these robots and she's like my baby boy and like becomes this like Listen, robot yes. assassin Exactly. woman and like gets like because there's like two types so, of robots there's like a fancy one and a like a like version one version two and version two is like right. more advanced and so Stay they're fighting home. version two your own good yeah it's very it's very very spooky i ooh, i might watch i robot they weren't gonna kill the ro- they weren't gonna kill the humans they, they were, were just gonna, gonna blast them, them into, into space to say with no food I don't and know. no bathroom. Yeah. How are they going to do that? No food, no bathroom. Well, if you don't have food, you don't need a bathroom. Um, so as far but as watching. They called her the violet one. And I thought that was really funny because she, the violet, like the color violet, violet cause cause she she purple. Purple. Yes. because she was purple. Because she's purple. She was the violet one too. That's so um, funny. So that might be something like small kids because what happens is she beats the snot out of these robots and it sprays oil on her face. But it looks like if she were a ninja in Mortal Kombat. You know what that would be, right? Very funny. Oh yeah, so, very funny. So um, I was yeah. dying. Very. I was good. dying. The the father daughter dynamics are very sweet. Yes. There's a lot of family like and in the, the like, mother. That, yes, there's a lot of redeeming qualities. There's they, a lot of redeeming qualities in it. The they, dad, they, they love, love each, other, each other so much. I think it's like every family. We love each other, but we get on each other's nerves. And I think you know, that the dad and the daughter. I mean, you get on my nerve all the time. <laughs> and I, I'm going to have to get you a screwdriver, though. Um, I, by the way, for full disclosure, I keep a pocket knife in my pocket at all saying. times. And Hannah goes, "It reminds me of you and your pocket knife." We went to the ball game uh, oh, last weekend, and did. I got up to the th- I got up to the thing where you're like, scan oh, you, and I'm like, not. "Crap, I got a dag on pocket knife. I had to go hide it in a bush." Yeah, you, and then pocket knife bush. Was, Pocket knife bush. It was there when I got out. Yeah, gotta go get. Um, his dad's like, okay, you all go ahead and start without me. I'm gonna go get my pocket knife out of the bush. Okay, so something for um, parents. If you're gonna let your kids watch this, this. Um, um, how are we gonna say? It? You help me here, Hannah, because I'm bad about this. <laughs> Katie um, is LGBTQ. Yes, um, she. They handle it very well. If this is um, a conversation that you don't feel comfortable with discussing with your children, then I suggest you watch the show and then watch it again with your children because <laughs> you're going to watch it. want to watch it twice anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. So just, just as a, you know, just to let you know, like I said, watch it for yourself. Mm-hmm. Also watch, there's an in credit scene. Um, I didn't even know the, there was an in credit scene. I just, I stopped mom watching it. mom is like, oh, Oh, are you guys both going to be here for Thanksgiving? Oh, no, the end credit scene was cute. And um, so, yeah, watch it um, and then watch it again with your kids because it is fantastic and you're going to want to watch it again. I know yeah. I do. There you go. I'd want, yeah, I might put it in the background while I'm packing this. So, week. 
uh, how many robots would you give this movie? Uh, should we do robots? Because they're bad in this movie. I should know, we do screwdrivers? Pugs. Screwdrivers. Loaves of bread. Loaves. Screwdriver. <laughs> oh, loaves of bread. I'm going to give it four and a half. I'm going to give it five. Four and a half. All right. There you I'd go. watch it again. I would watch it again. I would, yeah, I would like watch, watch it again and again and again and not get bored with it because I think I it's one of those things. I feeling that I've missed stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think you could watch it over and over again and laugh at something new, see something new. Okay. Yeah. We've been talking so, for a long time today. I saw you look at your watch. Here's the deal. Let, let us, we're going to go from something for kids to something that is not for kids. Oh, Sally we, said, sorry. Sally said, love it. Sad liquid running down my face. Sally thought that was funny. Oh, yeah. That is funny. Um, the, um, uh, we read we another read, horror, we read a horror comic. And this was free. On mm-hmm. Amazon Prime, if you have Amazon Prime, you can read the first trade paperback for Lock and Key. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can read sh- more than the first one. I think there's a, another one is there for free, oh, too. Oh, really? I don't know. Well, I'll have to check it. Um, it is a horror comic written by <laughs> Joe Hill with art by, I believe, Gabrielle Rodriguez, I believe. I don't know. Is, Ga- is that a lady or a man? Gabrielle, I think or it's a woman. someone else. I could be wrong. I don't know. Do you know who Joe Hill is? No. Okay, so Joe Hill... Who is the Google. writer of this? Was a horror? No, no, no. I know. Don't you don't have to. Google. Okay, okay. Tell me. Google Late to see if me. it's a gr- Google to see if it's a, a lady that draws it. Okay. So Joe Hill is decided when he started writing horror that he did not want to be accepted on the coattails of his famous horror father. Oh, I read about this. So I read he about changed this. Changed his name from Joe Hillstorm King to Joe Hill. Stephen King has a son, and his name is Joe Hill. That is it. So, yes, there you go. Joe Hill, the creator of Lock and Key, is the son of Stephen King. And yo, Lock and Key is spooky. Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, I discussed some of the elements of this of this book with my small group who has seen the show on Netflix. And the show on Netflix is much softer. I've watched, book. okay, so we talked about this before. I think in real life, not on the podcast, but I started watching lock and key just because it seemed really interesting. And I talked about we, the, this comic stops when the little boy finds the mind key and what? the mind key. Oh, yes. He like, he pulls it out of the thing, the mind key. So did you see, did you go to the, the, did you look at the last pages of the comic? No, no. you read the comic and then there's like extra stuff at the end. Oh, I didn't. So, I didn't look at remember it. Remember how I said there's a thing in comic books called pinup pages? Yeah. Which would be like one page picture that you could go mm-hmm. and look at. We talked about that when we read uh, Swamp Thing. Yeah. And you can well, pair them out if you wanted to. And there is a picture of Bodie, who is the little boy, his mind and the key into the back of his head. It's into with, his back of his head. With the different sections of his mind and what's inside each one of his sections. That's what the mind key does. Wow. So, and it is like I watched, I watched the, okay. I watched a, I couldn't finish. I, okay, here's scary well, things are too much for me. Okay, let's not do that because let's just talk about the comic because we don't okay. have a lot of time. Anymore. Okay, 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 okay. So, this okay. comic covers uh, a big, huge chunk, a, a very traumatic event, very traumatic event for the three children. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, their, their father is murdered. Mm-hmm. Their mother is attacked. The mother lives, and they uh, go to move in with their uncle, who lives, if this tells you anything, in Lovecraft. I saw that, too. I was like, how did I that miss that go. they live in Lovecraft? I was like, that how did I miss you. that? Yeah. So Uncle Duncan, who I believe um, they allude to his sexual preferences in it, um, Uncle Duncan loves his brother loves his brother's family and their children very much love him too but you come to find out that the the older son who has to basically save uh beat one of the attackers to keep to save his to save yeah his his brother and sister and his mom um and he's like late high school and he's like a big dude like like a a big dude like he'd be like like a linebacker I would say he's more like a person here in central Kentucky, like a farm guy. I think, I think he's like a farm boy too. He's got the he, ball cap on. He's with got the, the ball cap. Lure. He's like fixing like stuff. Like a good fella. Yeah. yeah. The girl. The, is the, more of a. More of punk. Like a gothic. Punk. Punk rocker type yeah, of person. Yeah. She emo. Um, but the. I forgot what I was going to say. The boy. You has a flashback when he was a little kid, like Bodie's age, who's a young, their younger brother. And he listening to his mom and his dad flirting with one another. 
And um, he says, like, he has a plan. If anything happens, you would go live with Duncan at um, Key what House. They call it Key House. And there goes, where you all would be safe. And he goes, well, why don't you live there? And he goes, because the house didn't choose me. The house chose Duncan. I think so the house chose Bodie. Speak. And I think the house has chosen Bodie. The house has chosen Bodie. So Which, ooh, that a, makes me nervous. I don't know. I get a I nervous think, feeling about it. I think, I think long, I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit of a protection there. I, I think, think there's the a protection there. I, I don't think but the house wants, Bo- but people, his, Bodie's people think he's being a little kid. And Not think anymore. Coping strangely. Not a, they don't anymore. Not his, at the his, end of the comic. His two kid, the two brothers two and sisters, brother and because sister. here's the thing, the grownups can't see it. The right. whole thing well, is that because, the grownups can't see it because they're okay, too so old gonna, to believe in it. So the first door he unlocks, when you open it, basically what happens is you unlock a door, something happens. Mm-hmm. All the I keys do something key different. Each key goes to a different door, door and it does something different. Yeah. They're all so keys. He, he opens a door and he becomes a ghost and he can mm-hmm. go to different things. The, the cool thing was is that when he goes to school the first day, he draws what you did this summer. And part of it was like, Becoming it was a horrifying. ghost. <laughs> this would be like, dude, you're going straight to <laughs> my wife's counseling center. It's petrifying. Going s- straight to my wife's counseling center. You are. That's just what it is. But part of it is I like being a ghost. And they're like, you can't draw that. That is. That's the mom was literally ghost. like, I'm glad that you feel close to your dad when you like to be a ghost. But you can't tell your teacher that anymore, man. You're freaking people out. Yeah, but he really was a ghost. He really and was a ghost. There is a creature that had been held captive in the well of the key house. and She has uses- two keys. She is the anywhere key, and she is the face changing key. So she. Well, how do you go know that? Because she has the anywhere key. Well, how did you know that's what it was called? Because if you look at the key that has the two faces, yeah, it, it so she it changed. It? She changed the way that she looked. She had the two. She so she you has. Now, the, so she okay. changed her face in the comic. I didn't pay attention. And the anywhere yes, key she's now like a dude. Well, the anywhere key you put it in a door and you turn it, and you it takes anywhere. you where you want to go. Gotcha. It takes you anywhere. So yeah. she has the so two the keys you don't want her to have, my guy. Oh, yeah. it stresses me out. It stresses me out. So okay. bad news. We're going to end. We're going to wrap it up here. Here's the deal. This book is good, but it is hard. It is hardcore. And again, we'll put a, a note on here. This has to do with there's uh, we're fr- family friendly, so I don't want. There's mention some it. significant trauma. There's a lot of gore. To the mother. Let's just say this. One. They're both male perpetrators. And one of the male perpetrators, yes, the mother lives. Um, and there, yes, there is blood. That is infamature. It is rated R all day yeah. long, that comic book is. And do not let kids watch. Do not let kids read this. I don't know if they can watch the show because I haven't watched I, it. So I can't I give think a it's, review. I think it's PG-14, like TV-14. Gotcha. Understood. It is. This comic book would, if they did it like the comic book, it would be. In, it's not. It's be, not. You don't see anything that happened beforehand. Right. You, you I mean there's a couple flashback mm-hmm. scenes, but they're not as graphic. Gotcha, gotcha. And I, I stopped watching it from like a psychological perspective because in the with the mind key, the daughter gets it, and she. So they t- yeah, okay, gotcha. She goes into her mind, and it is not a safe place for her to be because she has unprocessed trauma. And as a person who does my job, I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh no, she's gonna make a poor. Cho- she does. She makes a poor choice. She goes into her mind, captures her fear in her mind. Kills it, buries it outside. It like literally takes it out of her head and buries it. So yeah, and you so can't do like a, you fear like anxiety is a natural pr- response. Right. But when mm-hmm. we've experienced like trauma or traumatic events, but Hannah, it ain't all about your head. Don't forget about your legs. I sent you that don't song about your hips. That's a sweet song. song. Anyways, I uh, uh, it was cool yeah. to read. Yes, this is a good. This is um, it is not my jam. But it was a good book, though. I can tell if it is your jam, you'll love it. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. Well done. It's, the art's fan. The art is gorgeous. The art is really and cool. I it's feel so, very stylized. I feel so sad for the kids. I mean, really, I empathize with them. It's sad. Um, but I think they're really going to be united, and the family will come together. Uh, yeah, this, I'm. Ex- I I'm bummed that it's not my jam because I I want to know no. how it ends. Ditto. But I who knows? But I don't think I can read them. I don't think I can keep reading them. All right. But if you like so, horror stuff, check it out. Check it out. All right. 
Thank you guys for playing along. Yes. All of our seven listeners. Don't forget, if you share this and DM me your address, I will mail you stickers. I mailed some out and people are like, these are Joe awesome. got them. And I'm like, I know. Yeah, Joe loved them. Joe loved and them. And so did uh, Josh. Uh, Spencer sent me a, That's a, awesome. a note saying thank you. And the guy from California. Loved it. Really? Uh, Master Brad on Discord. Yeah. He was so very <laughs> thank you. I thought yeah. awesome. Good deal. And the, uh, Charlie from uh, a friend of mine um, was like, man, I collect stickers. I've got them already in the little spot where they go. So fun. Labeled and everything. So, yeah. Awesome. So, there you go. So, cool. share. Press the share button. Okay. Enroll. Enroll. Um, thank you, sweet friends, for listening. Hey, our art and cover art was made by my little brother, dad's son, Nathan, um, on Microsoft Paint. He literally is just an artiste, y'all. He did that Microsoft Paint. Phenomenal. Our theme Woo-hoo. music is created by Brockwell Nason. Um, check out go, his bro. stuff um, on Spotify. Um, our Where YouTube music? is maintained by uh, Big Pops himself, and Which I edit our podcast. I need to do some of it. I haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody looks at it anyway. So. Oh, I know. People are watching them. One of them has 13 views. What? Oh, gosh. I need to start putting more up. Yeah, you do. What? 13 views is so many views. <laughs> <laughs> it's those daggone, oh, daggone HBO execs. <laughs> they're they're, they're just trying to see what, house. yeah, trying to make sure that we're not giving away any trade secrets. No, I got none. All right. <laughs> well, friends, well, thank guys, you for hanging with us. Prime time next time. Woo! Tuesday night. Yes. We'll let you know. Okay. Well, sweet friends, thank you for hanging with us, and we will catch you on the flippity-flop. Flip-flop. Bye. Bye.